Hello and welcome to the V-Ray for Form Z Quick Start video for exterior lighting. We are using this exterior architectural scene to demonstrate how to set up lighting using V-Ray for Form Z. Now the first thing I'm going to do is open up my V-Ray settings palette. One thing that I recommend for new users is to click reset to reset your settings and then make sure to select architectural design. This way the scene is set up to render with settings specific to an architectural scene, including ensuring that the V-Ray Sun is presenting the scene along with a properly set up sky environment. My settings are already set up here. I've got interactive enabled and I also have turned on material overrides. So I'm going to go ahead and start the interactive rendering. But as I mentioned earlier in a previous video, the material override is useful in that it replaces the materials in your scene with a single material making it easier to judge the scene purely on its lighting, as well as saving some render time. Since I set up the scene using the architectural design, we're presented with a rendering with a sun and sky system as you can see. The sun and sky are actually two different elements inside the scene itself, although they are linked to one another. The sun, as you can see here, is a light that exists in the scene. If I go to my lights palette in Form Z, you will find the V-Ray sun listed. We can even turn the light off and on like we can with any other lights. You'll notice that when we disable the sun, the sky is actually still present. This is because the sky is set in the environment separately. Disabling either the sun or sky does not affect the other, but you can see that the sky does reference the sunlight. Changes made to the sun will affect the sky, such as moving the sun down closer to the horizon changes the sky to be darker with a much warmer hue. I'm going to move the sun's location, and just like with the standard form Z sun, there are several different ways to reorient the sun. If I go to the Tool Options palette with the sun selected and click on Show Controls, we're presented with the points to move in the scene for both the sun's origin and the point to dictate the direction of the sun, called the center of interest. Notice that as I drag these points around, the interactive rendering updates itself as well. You can also manually input coordinates for both the sun and the center of interest in the parameters tab in the tool options palette. If you would like a more precise location of the sun based on your site location, you can use the sun position palette. Just as it affects the regular Form Z sun, changing these settings affects the angle of the V-Ray sun. So at 2.54 p.m. on December 8th in New York, New York, this is what the lighting would look like. Changing any of these settings will affect the V-Ray sun accordingly. Now let's say I want to use an EXR or HDR image in the environment and light the scene instead of using the V-Ray sun and sky system. First, I'll disable the sun and sky system that we have in place. The sun can be easily disabled here in the lights palette. Then, I need to disable the sky by going to the environment section of the V-Ray settings palette and changing it to a simple color. Now, what I need to use for this is called a dome light. Now, the dome light will not only override the environment, but provide the direct light that is needed and now missing since I removed the sun. Now, since it's not already enabled, I need to enable the V-Ray Lights palette. This palette has all nine V-Ray light types from which to choose. Mesh, Rectangle, Sphere, IES, Sun, Point, Spot, Direct, and Dome lights. Now, I'm going to be using the Dome Light tool to place a dome light in the scene. Like the sun, the location of the dome light is typically not important as it envelops the entire scene in the dome's image no matter where the dome is placed. Now, as soon as I've placed it, the default image shows up in the interactive rendering, lighting the scene and providing the background. 
This default image is used to simulate a conceptual lighting environment for showcasing product design, but we can easily switch this out for an image file of an outdoor environment. To do this, I'll change the settings in the dome light by double clicking on it in the lights palette to open the lights parameters window. Here, I'll go to the parameters tab and under where it says use texture, I'll click on select image file. There are a couple of EXR files that come with V-Ray for Form Z that can be used in conjunction with this dome light. The first is the dome light.exr, which is that default product design related image that's already being used. Then there's default dome light texture.exr, which is an outdoor sun and sky. I'll go ahead and open this file and select OK, and notice that it updates in the rendering. As I move the camera around, you can see the sun in the dome light, which is providing the majority of the direct lighting in the scene and the one casting shadows. I'd like to rotate the image around so that the image of the sun is shining more on the front of the house. So I'll go back into the light parameters for the dome light, and under the parameters tab, I'll modify the spin parameter to rotate the dome. Something around 90 degrees should do it. So, as I hit OK, the interactive rendering updates with the new settings. Now, EXR and HDR files come in varying intensities, so if the scene is not bright enough, it's easy to go back into the light parameters for the light to change the intensity to make the light a little more intense. I'll try a value around 4, which ends up being too bright, so I'll try a value closer to 2, which as you can see is better. Now, let's say I want to create more of a dusk time rendering with artificial lights lighting up the scene. First, I'll delete the dome light and re-enable the sun and change the background for the environment back to sky. Next, I'll lower the sun to be closer to the horizon to darken the scene. I'll manually enter a value to place the Z coordinate of the sun's origin to be just above the Z coordinate of the center of interest. And you'll see how the scene is darker and more orange, just like a setting sun. I want to provide a downlight in each of these overhang spaces, and the V-Ray spotlight will work best. I'll move the frame buffer out of the way and zoom into the ceiling of one of the porch areas so I can place the light. I'll click on the spotlight in the V-Ray lights palette and place the light in the center of the ceiling. And then I'll reset the view. Now, I'm going to bring the V-Ray frame buffer back into view. With our current camera exposure, the light is a little too dim, so we can't really see it yet. I'm going to double click on the light in the lights palette so we can modify the intensity. First, a value of 10 and click OK. Now, it's starting to show up a bit, but I want it to be a bit brighter, so I'm going to adjust the value up to 40. A couple of more things I'd like to do. I'd like to make the light a little bit warmer, and I'd like to adjust the light so that these edges are a little softer and bleed into the darkness a little bit more gradually. So, I'm going to go back into the light parameters. First, I'll adjust the color to something warmer around the yellow-orange range. Then, to soften the edges, I'm going to go into the Parameters tab and adjust the inner angle. This also increases the overall size of the light's spread as well. After I click OK, you can see that the light is warmer and the spread is larger and softer looking. For the light in the next overhang, rather than creating a new light from scratch, I'll simply copy the existing light and place it around the center of the ceiling of the other overhang. And here we go. This is looking good. Notice that once I copy the light, it shows up as a separate light in the lights palette so that you can fine tune its setting separately if required. Now let's add some lights to the interior of the house. What I'm going to use is a V-Ray sphere light to add some nice ambient glow to some of the interior spaces. I'll start with this space here at the top level of the house. I'll zoom into the space and I'll place the light. 
When placing V-Ray sphere lights, you first click to place the center point and then you define the radius. Once placed, I'll move it down over in the space and that looks good. Once we move the view back, you'll notice that it's not bright enough. I'm going to double click on the sphere light in the lights palette to access the light parameters to make some changes to that light. Now I'll try a different intensity value to make it a little bit brighter. We'll go with a value of 1000. Now that's quite a bit nicer. Let's try a brighter value to see how it looks and also change the color to be a nicer warmer tone. Now our tone is better but it's a little too bright at this point so I'll back the intensity down to 1200. Now I can see the sphere slightly peeking through the window but I'd like to hide it so we only see the light bouncing off of the back walls and the ceiling of that space. I can do this by going back to the light parameters and in the parameters tab I simply check invisible and will no longer see that light source in the rendering. Now I would like to light up a couple of more spaces inside the house so I have already duplicated that original sphere light twice and placed one in this upper floor room and also one in the lower floor room as well making adjustments to their intensity values since they both need to light larger rooms than the original one upstairs. Now that I have the lighting how I'd like it to be, I'm going to go ahead and produce a more final render. So I'll stop the interactive rendering with this icon. For the final image, I'm going to open up the V-Ray settings palette and disable my material overrides. Then, I'll increase the size of the image by going to the Render Output section. And finally, I'll disable Interactive and then hit Render. Thank you for joining us for this look at exterior lighting in V-Ray for Form Z.